Thanks for watching Studio 9. I'm your host, Robert Bettis. Studio 9 loves to shine a spotlight of good news, and today we're honored to focus that light on four remarkable women. She founded the Underserved Communities Foundation to transition the homeless to independent living. Her personal connections are changing lives. One special educator has found the secret to transforming a small town public school district into a legacy of scholastic and athletic champions. This creative woman launched the Green Hope Project to reach at-risk youth by turning trash into inspiring artwork. But first, Lillian Crouch arrived in El Paso in 1969, was EPISD's first African-American principal, and is the chair of the board of a billion-dollar credit union. Our first remarkable woman, Lillian Crouch. Lillian, you arrived in El Paso, 1969, in the middle of a classic windstorm. Yet you made it your home. Tell us why. Because of the people, because of the uh, uh, responsibilities, because of the open arms, because of the food, because so much that I did not know initially that I learned. Your husband, of course, was in the military, a distinguished gentleman himself. Uh, you were a teacher in Dallas, and then you came here, and you really charted territory as a teacher. You became a principal, the first African-American principal. Right, I did. I had a lot of opportunities afforded me. Uh, I had some mentors when I came in, and uh, it was uh, most rewarding, and I am most grateful for those experiences that I have encountered. You went on from there to be head of human resources for EPISD. So you had a connection with every teacher, really. Right, I did. I did. And I was director of employee benefits, and that encompassed uh, insurances and uh, with health and... Uh, Retirement planning. Right. Yeah. Uh, and it was just all everything that the teacher needed, you know, or the employees needed, under that umbrella, I was responsible for that. And then later I was promoted to Executive Director of Human Resources for the district. You've served on a number of boards. In fact, it's nine boards. You're currently the a chairman of the board of RISE Federal Credit Union. You've been with RISE a long time, back when it was Teachers Federal Credit Union. And look how much it's grown. Yes. Wow. Yes. We have over 70,000 members. We started with like $20,000, uh, and now we're a billion dollar credit union. Wow. And it has just grown, and we're just so proud of the accomplishment. We are proud of the way uh, of our CEO and the things that he has done to rise, uh, to make it so special. Yes. And so we are very grateful for his leadership and all of the employees of, of RISE Federal Credit Union. Uh, Lillian, you have a personal connection to me because you were very close to my mother-in-law, Mary Haynes, when she was a county commissioner. And you two were presidents of the Historical Society. Tell us about your passion for El Paso's history and culture. Well, we both served as president. I think I was before her and then she came after me. We also chaired the Hall of Honor and really tried to enhance, and we did, the kinds of services that the El Paso County Historical Society provide. Uh, we were both inducted into the Hall of Honor, uh, and we just both loved the city, and we did so much together. A lot of your friends back in Dallas are still confused as to why you chose El Paso over Dallas as your final home. So if you had to say one defining thing about this town, what would it be and your contribution to it? I think the opportunities that was afforded me uh, all these years uh, since 1969 have been remarkable and I am so grateful for the opportunities that were given to me 
and the friends that I have met and the things that I have been able to accomplish in the city, I am most grateful. And the city's grateful to you. Lillian, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.